Greetings. My name is Manuel Teran. I was born in Vanadium, New Mexico, June 19th, 1935. I am 85 years old now. And my son Joe had been doing ancestry and we found a very interesting uh, topic that we could talk about. And this is called Los Mineros Unidos, Emilio Carranza. As we know, in the 1920s, 30s, and 40s, there, were no, uh, there was no workers' compensation, no social security. If a member of the corporation was to be injured or killed in the mine, there was no compensation for them. The family was left without anything. So the people from Vanadium, which had probably a population of 100 to 150 people, decided that they could form a corporación. And they, they formed it, the Corporación de Mineros Unidos, Emilio Carranza. Why Emilio Carranza? Emilio Carranza was a Mexican aviator who was very well known on both sides of the United States and Mexican border. He had, uh, he had flown from Mexico City to New York and the, the uh, and on July, Friday, July 13th, 1928, the Corporación Mineros Unidos was named after Emilio Carranza, mainly because most of the workers in the mines, Santa Rita, Vanadium, and uh, the surrounding areas were immigrants, first first uh, generation immigrants in Vanadium. Vanadium is a small town approximately 20 miles southeast of uh, Silver City. It's between Bayard, New Mexico and Santa Rita, New Mexico. Uh, it's mostly inhabited by maybe 30, 40 people at this time. With the Corporación, the miners decided that they needed a social type of gathering in order to be able to uh, help one another. Their motto was, The model of the, the organization was that it was a brotherhood and that the, like it is a brotherhood with the sons of a mother, the same principle is the brotherhood of a great social family. And this fraternity was one of love and the love is charity and compassion to alleviate the sufferings of others. They had rules and regulations that they followed very religiously and uh, they, the corporation had dues that were uh, due once a month and it was primarily for when a member was injured or unable to work or killed. My cousin Arturo Alvo born in 1933 in Vanadium. He was of the Navy, shown here. He wrote this about the corporation, and I'd like to read a part of it. That the regulations and reforms for the corporation were executed by members, Encarnacion Salas, Apolonio Teran, who was my father, 
Jose Albo, who was my uncle. And the members approving this were Rafael Larezaba, Andres Claveron, Nestor de la Torre, Antonio Rodriguez, Ezequiel Santa Maria, Jose Castañeda, A. Estrada, Jesus Maria Martinez, P. Hernandez, and Rafael Luera. These were declared and accepted in May of 1937, several years after the corporation had uh, been started, because every so often the members would get together and see if some of the regulations and rules needed to be changed. And this is where this, they would get this organization together and change them. Now, understanding that it was begun in May 25th, 1929. At this time, Encarnacion Salas was the president, Anatolio Gonzalez was vice president, Rafael Luera, secretary, and Eufemio Alvo, treasurer. Eufemio Alvo was my grandfather. Other officers were Encarnacion Reza, A. Marquez, Luz Gutierrez, G. Altamirano, and Reyes Olguin. Now the main reason for the corporation was to strongly unite its members and come to their assistance and protection whenever there was any illness, accident, or any other need that all could be of assistance. They had a ritual that they would go through at the beginning of the business meeting and had a large picture of Emilio Carranza and a large cloth standard made up of white, blue, and gold bearing the insignia of the corporation and a set of orden de sesiones. This uh, standard was a large, impressive standard. It was uh, blue and golden tassels and had the picture of Emilio Carranza. This is the picture of Emilio Carranza. It had a picture of Emilio in the middle. In, at the end of this presentation, uh, we will show you some of the uh, pictures of the standard as they were used in every funeral for every member they would take them and and, uh, and hold them at the grave site. The opening ritual and some beautiful and lofty ideas about the Brotherhood were that, and this is translated, but I'll read it to you in Spanish first. Some of the ideas were El hermano siempre debe de ayudar al hermano y solo excluir de tal deber la absoluta o impulsividad de brindar su buena co cooperación debiendo siempre en todo caso reconocer. El que no ayuda no debe estorbar. I will translate it for you. The brother should always help his brother and should only excuse himself from doing such if when it is absolutely impossible to bring good cooperation. And in all, in every aspect, they should always understand he who cannot help should not be in the way. They also had regulations as to how the money was to be collected. They, uh, the, the dues were a dollar a month. And uh, from this fund, they would use money for when there was a funeral. And in case of a funeral, they, uh, the corporation will give the, the family $40 plus $1 a, a week for five weeks, or if the necessity was great, $3 for five weeks. When a member died, 
they were all to donate a dollar toward the members' burial. The fraternity was to give $40 to the members, as I mentioned. And uh, the, when they had no, uh, no undertakers at that point that they could uh, go to, my grandfather, Eufemio Alvo, would be the one to make the coffins and the women would get together and they would use the materials to line the coffins and they would provide the flowers and all the members were to go to, uh, to, the, to the burial and also to the wake. The wake was something that they had to, to attend until unless absolutely necessary. This kind of gives us the overall of the fraternity. Now, I will show you the ledger in which they kept My grandfather was a treasurer, and he would note when they paid the dues, he would, he would uh, note who paid and what they paid. And it goes from 1928 to 1940s. And uh, this is how long the, the organization lasted. After many of the workers started getting jobs elsewhere, this corporation was uh, then disbanded. This is the booklet that they had with all the regulations. And when my grandfather died in, 19, in, in January of 1939, my father, Apolonio Tiran, took over as treasurer. And this is a copy of the receipt that he would give each member as they uh, paid their dues. This is a list of all the members who were in the corporation at one time. This included from 1928 until the 1940s. These will be shown to you later after we have uh, concluded this, this presentation. This organization was very strong and all members were very diligent in uh, applying all rules and regulations and as they started separating and going the different ways the corporation finally in the 1940s dissolved. My father kept a standard and, and stored it in the basement of our uh, house in Bayard. However, during a rainstorm our basement flooded and the standard was ruined and had to be thrown away. This is uh, the conclusion of this, of this uh, presentation. This is a picture of the writing that uh, my cousin Arturo Alvo did about the Corporación Mineros Unidos, which I talked about a few minutes ago. Uh, it probably is not very visible there, but if you would like a, a copy of it, I can, uh, if you will just email to this address and we will send you a copy. This is a picture of Don Encarnacion Salas. He was the first president of the organization. Something interesting about Don Chon Salas. He was an immigrant from Mexico, born in, 19, in 1896. When he came to the United States, he would show people, and I remember seeing that he had a bullet hole in his wrist. And I asked him, what, why, why was that? And he said that during the Mexican Revolution, he was uh, in some kind of an army, and he was shot through the wrist. And so he immigrated to the United States. But Don Chon Salas was the first president of the Corporación de Mineros Unidos. This is a picture of my grandfather, Eufemio Alvo. He was a treasurer for the uh, 
corporación from its inception all the way until he died in January of 1939, at which time my father took over. This is my grandfather's writing. This is where he would note all the uh, payments and uh, the name of who paid and how much. And he had this fancy writing that uh, this was done in May of 1936, the seventh year of the foundation of the, uh, of the organization. This is the picture of the standard that I was talking about. It had gold and uh, blue standards, and it said when it was started. Here is a picture of Emilio Carranza. This is my grandfather, Eufemio Alvo, and the priest at a funeral when they buried one of their members. All the members were supposed to attend whenever they had a funeral. This is another picture. This is the picture of my grandfather when he died. And uh, this is Father Gwynevan and uh, some of the people who were here at the funeral. That's Manuel Marquez. And uh, my mother was standing here somewhere, but I don't see her. Feeling none. This is a picture of my grandfather's older brother. Lupe uh, Alvo was born in Mesilla also with my, when my gra where my grandfather was born. And uh, he was five years older than my grandfather. If you'll notice in the background, you can see the kneeling nun so that you can see more or less in the Vanadium Cemetery where the graves are. He is buried here. My grandfather is buried not right next to him. This is a booklet of the Corporación, and uh, we'll show you the inside where uh, all the uh, rules and regulations and rituals are. This is uh, when it was begun, 25th of May of 1929, and these are all the members that were in, uh, like the uh, Mesa Directiva, which would be the uh, the administrators. And you can see here, uh, Presidente y Encarnación Salas, uh, Eufemio Alvo, who was a treasurer, and some of the other of, uh, officers of the of the corporation. These are the rituals of the fraternity, and uh, it has a about nine pages of, uh, of rules and regulations and what they should do and how they should conduct themselves and who would be helped with how much and when. This, they would meet every once in a while, and this is my father's writing, that they decided that uh, they needed to change one of the rules of the articles of the regamientos, which would be the rules, and, uh, and what they would do to change. This, these are copies of uh, the receipts. This, uh, my father, Apolonio Teran, took over the uh, treasurer's job after my grandfather, Eufemio Alvo, died. And so my father would give each of the uh, members a receipt for the money that they paid, which was one dollar a month. This is a picture. This immigrant apparently came from Mexico, was working in the mines, had no family here, and 
he was killed in a mine accident. And so my grandfather, who is pictured right here, he's the one who made the casket. And then the women got together and, and uh, had lined it with material and got the flowers. Some of the men here whom I remember, this is Don Chon Salas, who was the first president of the organization. This is my grandfather, Eufemio Alvo. This is my uncle, Jose Alvo. And this is my father standing right here. This man was uh, Maya. He was, uh, they, there was a, a story that he was such a strong man that he could pick up a bag of cement with one hand. And there were several other men here, but I don't remember their names. If you know any of these members and you would like to uh, contact me, uh, please do so at the uh, email that we showed you in a few, minute, a few minutes ago, and we'll show it to you again at the end. These are the members that were listed probably from 1937 to 1942. These are the members of the, uh, of the corporation. Again, if you cannot read them well, uh, you can contact us at the email and we'll send you a copy of this paper. This is my grandfather's home. It was situated about uh, 500 yards from the cemetery across from the uh, railroad tracks. It's about uh, right next to the creek that used to run. Uh, an interesting fact about this was my cousin Arturo Alvo and I had stayed overnight at my grandmother's in April of 1945. We were sleeping in this uh, porch that uh, was screened in and they had like uh, canvases that could be rolled up. Being July, it was warm. So we, Art and I woke up about five in the morning or so and we were sitting up in the bed with, uh, with our pillows behind us. And suddenly there was a, a very bright flash to the east and we looked at each other and we thought, that can't be the sun, it's, uh, it's too early for the sun. And so many years later, in reading, I realized that what we had actually seen was the explosion of the first atomic bomb. That was an interesting thing. This concludes the presentation that we had on Corporación de Mineros Unidos. Again, if you have any questions or you would like to contact us, this is the email where you can contact my son, Joe Teran. That, that concludes our presentation. Thank you very much for listening and uh, hopefully we'll hear from some of you. If you have any pictures or any comments about this video or about uh, vanadium, please contact us. Thank you very much.